five, four, three, two, one. Uh, this is the Human Services Committee on the 15th of August, uh, 4 p.m. Council Committee Room 4. Um, present are Gruffle Hall, Rutherford, Welton, Withers. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, the first on our agenda item is uh, uh, Resolution 2023-2378. Uh, approves a grant from the Greater Nashville Regional Council to the Metropolitan Social Services Commission to provide nutritional services for older or disabled adults and transportation services for eligible people. Do we have someone to speak to that? Right. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, that is a continuation of our grant that we've been doing for about 30 years where we provide congregate homebound meals for uh, seniors that qualify, and uh, we do it at 14 different sites. So, and then throughout Davidson County for the home delivered. Very good. How much do you, um, how many people do you serve? Uh, total uh, a month, about, s about right under 800. Very good. So good. Yes, sir. Uh, questions from the committee? No questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Okay. Five, if they have five in favor, zero against. That was quick. Last one of the year. Okay. <laughs> Um, and that the night would go that way. <laughs> oh, no. you're, are you thinking anything else, <laughs> Council Lady? We can pull everything off of consensus to discuss it. <laughs> okay, we uh, one of our last meetings would be to just yeah, <laughs> yeah you never know. Um, is to uh, have uh, discuss a homeless oversight, um, sort of get a sense and uh, update. Uh, so, uh, April, would you like to get started? Absolutely. In my absence last month, my team did really well. Super proud of them. Um, but I missed you all, so I came back for more. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. Did you pass out the package? Sorry. Everyone should have a package in front of them. On the first page, of course, we were able to change the title. We are now the Office of Homeless Services. This last month. So this is data for July. Thank you. that it wasn't changed, but that was data for June, so sure. I just want to make sure. Um, the second page, you'll see that there is a highlighted tracker um, at the very bottom, green, um, and that is a dashboard to our web page that holds updated, regularly updated data from our HMIS team on all of the funded agencies, those that have actually started to expense funds thus far. So right now, it's pretty much the interim gap housing and room in the end for the nutrition meals and um, who's that's it right now the supportive housing so, um, supportive services that are coming online um, they will be on the next tracker okay. but it's updated regularly and it's interactive so there's different pie charts and things like that really exciting the third page which one there's numbers on the bottom of the page really light blue faint colors um, to the right at the bottom. Um, but the third page is the $9 million interim gap housing, and you'll see the Community Care Fellowship and Salvation Army. Those are the two that are coming online. Um, we've noticed trends, right? One trend is um, Community Care Fellowship. Um, people are maybe not having all positive exits to permanent housing because for one, they have choice, two, um, being able to continue to utilize drugs and alcohol while residing in a church could, could be alarming, um, but Community um, Care Fellowship has agreed to continue to work with them and help them move into permanent housing. What our HMIS team is working on is a different dashboard for that so that it doesn't screw the numbers for the beds, but definitely gives them credit for continuing to help people with finding permanent housing. What we've noticed about the Salvation Army one is that people are staying longer and have found communities there and um, mm -hmm. don't want to leave, right? So we have total opposite for, <laughs> for both. Um, and some of those concerns could be a little bit of a racial component. We found some housing in that's safe and affordable, but maybe in a more African-American neighborhood. And this is maybe the second or third time that that's happened where there was a lot of vacancies and they did not want to go to that area. Of course, they do have choice and we're gonna to continue to work with them. Um, our lovely consultant has advised us, you know, three options of permanent housing um, for them to say no, and then um, we just move on to the next candidates. 
We actually have um, some vouchers that we worked with MDHA on getting people expedited to housing because um, by the end of September, some of these EHD vouchers would be returned back to the federal government and no longer available to us here in Nashville. So um, there's more information on I think the next page or the last page about that. Page four, that's the spending. Um, you know, when you start a new department, you have new finances, new practices, new um, access codes. So the ARP1, um, we're having to get access to that from Metro Social Services, and there will be more numbers here once we get that access. So you'll see the um, total funds, the funds remaining, and those that have been expensed as of July. So like we're at a good, really good spot and as it relates to the funding. Page five. Um, Emil did not come today. He said nothing has really changed from the slide last month. The only difference is the RFP is still open for the second round of the Affordable Gap Loan, and it closes September 29th. So currently it's still open. So there's no numbers to update on this slide. Page six. So this is the same from last month as well. One thing to note and highlight which is probably on the very next page. No, I think we took it out. Um, being a Helping Hand actually came online last, or this month, and two families are moving into those two units, and it's a total of one family, a family of seven, and another family of six. So a total of 13 people moving into two permanent housing units that came online already. That's really exciting for us. Some of our larger, harder to serve families and being a helping hand um, has been really great at um, accepting them without any conditions and receiving those referrals through our coordinated entry process. Page seven, those are the supportive housing, um, or supportive services that actually came online. So they have scaled up. Mending Hearts had a wonderful grand opening and their program will be called Mend Me. They've actually started accepting referrals and they are gonna, their case managers will be housed out of the old Knowles Center. I'm not sure if that's still the name of the center, but um, that's super exciting and um, they're partnering with Elam. Elam will be bringing on the um, inpatient detox beds for people that express a need in psychiatry. Mm -hmm. um, and page eight, there's a typo um, that Bill just caught walking in the door. There's a number that was copied and pasted for Cody's Army. At the, this point in time, they have not, um, they have the full amount that's um, 143,000 that's remaining. Um, so that is a typo that we will correct on our end. And the supportive uh, services are very new and fresh and um, starting as they're revving up, next month we will have expenses that's been occurred, so you'll see a difference there. And what we will also add to the graph like this will be number of people served, so you'll have dollar amount expensed and the number of people served. Mm, page nine, it's Board of Services. What's really great to highlight here is these funds were able to bring on recovery beds and detox options. That's totally different than what our normal COC would have um, been able to provide. Maybe about four, three years ago, a lot of the COC um, agent funded agencies that were re receiving um, A and D or providing A and D services sure. no longer um, really receive COC funds. So this is a great way to bring more support services to the table that have not normally been at the table. Well, Barry Housing Collective is moving along, super excited that $3 million, we have provided landlord incentives of 109 households. And you'll see on the next page, furniture vouchers, it's all broken into different amounts. So 71 furniture vouchers, 15 security deposits, and the number for um, the security deposits is a little bit low because we're braiding funding. We have some CDDG funds that provide deposits as well um, on a different
different grant. So did not report on that here just so that wouldn't confuse the two. And then there is $4 million competitive grants that will be going out at the end of this week. We're pretty close. We're just like putting a little polish on it so that it looks real good and clean. And the good thing is we've started entering our sign-on bonuses and our landlord, low barrier housing um, funds um, that actually go directly to clients, not directly to clients, on behalf of clients to the landlords. We started entering that information at the HMIS. So it's a really good, clean way to track the total dollar amount that went into that household. And you'll see here um, a nice spreadsheet that gives the demographics that um, you all were asking for. Almost finished the lot. And then you'll see the very next page there, page 12, is the um, breakdown and the funding as well. And the one column that we will add will be number of people served. I think it's really helpful to be able to show dollar amount and number of people served. Good information. Okay. Um, questions? Anybody have any questions? Comments? Um, my question is basically, um, where is the housing that people are determining is unsafe and they don't feel comfortable going to? Um, like North Nashville and some MDHA properties. So just general housing in North Nashville? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not everybody. There's just some of the um, Caucasian clients uh, do not want to go into largely African-American developments, but we've been able to fill those with, you know, if they don't choose it, then we bring up the next That's one of the great yeah. chances, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. the, I mean, how many... Are, I mean, how many are, are that say that? Or, I mean, they just are that yeah. bold that say that? I mean, well, I'm looking at more, but okay. um, I don't have the exact number in front of me, so I don't want to put a number out there. But I can get you that information. Yeah, just curious to yeah. see what that is. I mean, that's sort of sad, but okay. But do you have how many applications that are answered? Yeah. So, um, as we look at the voucher surge, which um, we have some information on that, we have forty. Um, people that are actually moving into permanent housing using that voucher surge that we were um, targeting. And we have 44 that actually have a voucher and they're looking for housing still. And we have 17 that are actually pending applications. So within the next two months, you should see more movement as well. That's great stuff. So we do have other options. You know, when if there is someone that's <coughs> white that don't want to move into a black neighborhood, then we do the best we can to find another location for them. And there are some that would accept that opportunity. Okay. Sounds good. Other questions? Yes? Can you talk to me about the pods? I don't really have any information on the pods. Um, I would say I think Ginger and Councilmember Evans are still waiting on a <laughs> engineer to sign off on the pods. They're still not released and signed off for us to utilize. And then um, I know Council Lady Evans. Um, looking for any faith-based options in her um, neck of the woods that would be willing to bring them on once the engineer has signed off on them. But right now, they're still not approved for us to utilize. The engineer who um, said to me that it's his assessment that the pods meet um, Nashville codes for temporary housing, but we still need that letter with the stamp to submit to the state. So I am how different, I just read where the frisk is using, him to get it to the frisk is using the same type of pods as temporary um, uh, apartments or, you know, for their school because they had a surge of attendance. And it sounded like they were using pods and they were able to make it work. I, I think not, they're It may be a different yeah, kind of pod, I don't know. I think but, they're containers as opposed to pods, okay. which containers can withstand uh, category three hurricane okay. you know, can take a direct it made hand. it sound like very, it was very these, similar these pods just will have curious. to be evacuated if y'all have a, a tornado mm -hmm. event yeah. or okay. uh, even microbursts they would need to be yeah they're held down by sandbags so yeah. we would need to make sure that we have an evacuation plan every time we have probably a uh, level three threat of storms which has okay. been three times in the last it's coming up more yeah <laughs> but you all did pass um the I think it was a resolution uh, that asked several different metro agencies to work on developing a plan of yeah, how to utilize did. those. 
so I think therefore you'd be going to okay. correspond with some of the departments to look at pulling them together to develop yeah, what is the best use what is the right concentration how do you do an evacuation plan you know those kinds of things so yeah, I mean, your op options go ahead Councilor. Lee. thank you so thank you for that update sure. I think I think it's known but there is space in Madison so we are ready to take those on as soon as they're available so that we can help house the two to three hundred people who are unhoused there so um, there is a there is a property that has been identified that I will do all that I can to maximize that space for these six folks. Good idea, thank you. What about um, OEM? Because Chief Swan, when he came up before, OEM had a plan to be able to oh, deploy and okay. utilize those, so you may want to coordinate with him. They will definitely be in the mix of planning. Yeah, I, it was it Houston or someplace that actually used these, as I recall? Lots of, lots of cities utilize them in various yeah. ways, so I think it's... It's really just getting all the departments together and the codes and getting that letter to the state fire marshal and figuring out what's the best way to use them um, and in what kind of concentrations, right? I think what, what um, we're trying to do is look at best practices, both in keeping folks safe um, and um, in a way in which they can um, have community, but also maybe not... Yeah huge you know units all in one place so how do we space that out across well, well, what the city I, I think you services. see from a distance and you got to of course get into the, the nitty, nitty gritty but is there scalable you know, scalability of something like that that can move and scale in places if you could get it to work I don't know as someone I think these will be a good pilot for that um, Madison right here you know in Madison because then you'll be able to see whether or not they're durable enough to stand up to the use because yeah. they're 60 square feet, so they're very, very small, and they have one window, and um, so, but there are other different temporary modular type of housing options that are out there as well, but I think that Madison's idea. stepping up and saying, yeah, we're in. April, yeah, could I you mean, work with Madison and, and see if you could yeah. give it, it would be great work. I think you're already aware. Yeah, yeah, I am aware. I am aware, aware, but we were From a zoning perspective, from a zoning perspective, nothing is needed because it is a church property. However, the community will need to get on board with it, and I will absolutely lead in that way and make sure that they are on board with it because we will do this work. Um, the homeless population in Madison numbers more than 300, and um, most of those uh, people want to stay in Madison. So they don't like going elsewhere. So finding a solution there and maximizing that space, I think, is a, a great opportunity for us to pilot these and see if they'll work. Good idea. Thanks for suggesting that. Okay. Any, any other questions? Um, appreciate it. you doing Congratulations on all this, April. Um, we just started this nine months ago, and you know, we'll check with the new vice mayor on how she wants to approach it in the future. But I'm hoping that you know, we've got another year and a half probably of a value. So it'd be, it, I think there's a value continuing this approach. Uh, Councilor, you think the same? Yeah. Keeping this oversight going. Okay. Uh, you know, other questions? Uh, homeless oversight is closed, and uh, thank you. Human Services is done for this session, boys. We are done. <laughs> and yes. We had a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good. <laughs>